so what do you make of today's announcement then, Jeff? Evan had said that we weren't going to release a Raspberry Pi 5 until 2024. So I think for a lot of pe people, it's going to be a big surprise. Uh, but for a lot of people too, there's this, this issue of trust and Raspberry Pi has been so hard to get for a couple of years. And now there's a Raspberry Pi 5 right as the Pi 4 is coming back on the market. So I think it's going to be interesting to see people's reaction to all that. The, the nice thing is the Pi 5 from my testing, I haven't tested everything yet, but I've been testing it a lot, is just so much more awesome than the Pi 4. It's it's the same thing as when, when we went from the Pi 3B Plus to the Pi 4. Every time I went back to use an older Pi, I was like, oh, this is this is rough. So it's the same feeling I'm getting when, now when I pick up my Pi 4, my compute module 4s. And uh, I really, I, I keep asking, you know, when are you coming out with the CM5? Because that's, <laughs> I think that'll be pretty cool too when we yes. see that. But so far the answer is we're, we're launching the Pi 5 right now. We're not looking forward to that. But I think that's a question that people will have after the huge success of the Compute Module 4. Yeah. And uh, of course also, you know, are we going to see a return of the 5A plus? You know, yes. are we going to see that form factor come back? I don't know. Uh, but yeah. it's exciting, and I, I think it's just, it's nice to finally move on. It, it, it feels like it's been so long since we've had a new Pi release. After we are you know, we are given all these releases every couple of years for forever. Yeah, until right. Until 2019, when it all kind of ended because of the chip shortages and COVID. So is there anything specific you're excited about? Oh, I think that most people that follow my work know that I'm excited about the new little PCI Express connector. I've already yeah. been hacking away at that thing, taking it to its limits. And uh, I can't make any promises yet, but I think that we might have another go at some sort of storage server uh, with this thing. Oh, I've, yes. uh, I've plugged in almost everything to it. And <laughs> I can say that it's much more stable than the uh, Pi 4's PCI Express bus, mostly because mm -hmm. people actually started testing that and seeing its flaws. So now they're actually testing it and making sure that the, the bus itself is going to work. Yeah, uh, But I have run into some issues, most of them having to do with the fact that it's so new. Um, there's not a lot of people besides me that have been messing with this bus yeah. and the engineers inside of Raspberry Pi. So I think that we'll be able to see some new use cases opened up, uh, especially for things like AI and machine learning with the Raspberry yes. Pi that were harder to do with the older versions. Yeah. And what do you think about the RP1, the new chip, the new silicon chip that's on there? I think it's it's a neat idea for the potential that it holds. I, I think for this generation of Raspberry Pi, it's kind of like they did it and they can prove that they can make this, I'm calling it a south bridge, basically yeah. a way for the CPU to interact with everything else. I think that it opens up some interesting possibilities for uh, people who want to hack on the Pi more. There's some cool things hidden in it that I don't think anybody in the initial launch and reviews is going to pick up on. And I, mm. I've still been exploring things, but I just haven't I haven't had the time to really dig in. But there's some guts inside of there that could make some interesting use cases, like having your Pi powered off using like 30 or 40 milliamps, but yeah. still being able to do some things with GPIO. So I, I think that we'll find some hidden gems in there, just like with the Pico when it launched. Nobody understood really the impact that having all of the features the Pico has with its uh, programmable uh, pins and things. It, it, yeah. I think we'll get to that point in a few months as people start hacking on it and it becomes available. But of course, that also assumes that it's going to become available. Um, but yeah. I, I, I think RP1 is, is a cool evolution. And I actually talked to the engineers a few months ago about it. And they had mentioned that this this RP1 chip has been in development for years now. And they initially intended it to be in an earlier Pi model, yeah. but they just never got it all the way to the finish line because they want to make sure that it's going to work great. It's going to do all the GPIO stuff. It's going to do all the IO. And yeah. the thing I like most about it right now is it actually has a, a different Ethernet setting inside of it that allows you to do PTT. So people that watch my channel know I love time things. <laughs> and uh, it'll allow me to do network time and, and things like that, uh, that you couldn't do on the Pi 4 Model B. What about the uh, the vid core, the new uh, video GPU core? It's It seems faster. The hard thing for me is I, I often try to avoid using it because I want to do ridiculous things like put a 4090 <laughs> on the Pi. So um, I'm not I'm probably not the best person to talk about the actual GPU inside of the thing. Um, yeah. But it one thing that I do like about it that I think the community has over and over said, we really want more openness. We want open source everything. 
And uh, I believe that they're ready to open source a lot of that driver stuff at launch instead of yeah. waiting a little bit. So I think that's a good move forward. Um, I, I, it's been fast in all my testing. Like at this point, finally, we have a Pi that can do 4K without compromise. Like with the Pi yeah. 4, you could do 4K, but it wasn't really that smooth. So yeah. I'm excited about that. Um, people that use it for retro, retro gaming and things like that, I think it's going to be helpful for all that too. Yeah, and uh, you know, I I believe that it's also Vulkan compliant already. So yes, that's going to be helpful for a lot of porting. They moved the um, the camera module out of the way, didn't they? So they could make room for the the PCI Express. So there's now two camera and display modules which you can use interchangeably. I understand. So that's quite exciting yes. as well. Two cameras. Yeah, it's, it's exciting, but also like every time they tweak the form factor, like they're moving the Ethernet port back over to the Pi three era. Like every time they do that, a lot of people who have their setups need to like rework it. It's not a yeah. big issue for me because I, what I usually do is I have them bare and either on a little tray or I have them in a rack or something. It's not a big deal. But for people building custom cases, it's like, oh, now I got to make an, I got to tweak the case again. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think that the, the thing that really affords with the camera and display is you can get more bandwidth for certain applications. And yeah. it's just, it's a little easier. Like I always had to remember early on, like what is CSI and DSI, which one is for the, I mean, in hindsight, camera and display. But I, I didn't know that initially when I bought yeah. my first Pi camera and it was confusing. So now if you buy the Pi camera, you can plug it into either one of those jacks and it'll just automatically pick it up. Yeah. So it's it's nice. It's it's a little annoying having it move around all the time. It's like <laughs> who moved all my stuff, who moved my cheese, but... Yeah, um, but that does afford the ability to have that PCI Express uh, connector, which, which I love, and yeah. uh, the new case design is pretty awesome with the new power button. Which also, if you didn't have that that port moved, then you wouldn't have room for the power button. And I'd rather have the power button than the consistency with the location of the, the camera connector. Yeah, it's one of the very small improvements they've made, isn't it? But it'll make a really big difference having that little power button. I believe the uh, the Ethernet port and the USBs, they're all swapped around as well. Are they back to the sort of three format? Yeah, yeah. So so the, uh, the Ethernet's now on the left side. The USB 3 ports are in the middle and USB 2 is on the right side. And another cool thing that that RP1 chip lets you do is have there's now two independent USB 3 controllers, so you can get five gigabits on each of those, and it's not shared. And there's two independent USB 2 controllers, so you can get 480 megabits on both of those. And there's one gigabit ethernet off of that one chip. So internally, there's, like I said, there, I think there's some secret sauce in there that's gonna be interesting to hack on uh, as yeah. people get it in their hands. So I, I think we'll see some interesting things come out of that and the new IO that the, the Pi 5 has. There'll be a lot more people building uh, home NAS servers, I suspect, with this now. It's a lot faster, particularly with yes. that PCI Express and the, the uh, M2 uh, storage yeah. capabilities that you can now bolt on there. Cool. So I'll be speaking to um, uh, Evan Upton later. Is there anything specific you'd like me to ask him or pass on? I would love to know if he is going to... Uh... Hot, uh, fast track the CM5 production, and also uh, on related to that is uh, when are we going to see CM4 production uh, ramp up to the same scale that Pi 4 is? Because now I can find Pi 4s. That's great, uh, but there's still so many projects out there that use the CM4 and will for years because it's it's a great platform. Um, when are we going to see those come back on market and? Uh, Will it be before or after we see a CM5? What do you think about the timing of this as well? This is the first time that Raspberry Pi have kind of pre-announced something before it's actually generally available. Normally it's uh, it's just a surprise. Here it is and you can buy it right away. Yeah, I actually, I, I talked about that with Eben earlier this year and, and they were still waffling over, should we announce it before? Or should we launch it the day that it's ready? And uh, I think that the reasoning for that, that decision is that people have been so, uh, maker community especially people like you and me have been so um, kind of annoyed at raspberry pi that they didn't want to just spring it on the community and people are just now buying the pi 4 and doing their projects again and then all of a sudden there's a pi 5. they wanted to give that lead time so that people could kind yeah. of prep themselves or, or ramp down or you know if they were about to buy a pi 4 just hold off another month and, and get to the pi 5 if they wanted to yeah. and the interesting thing is i think with the pricing model that they're choosing uh, which is to have a little bit higher priced SKUs at launch with a little more memory. I yeah. think that they're saying basically, you can still buy Pi 4s, which are a little bit more, uh, they sip less energy, I would say that. 
And yeah. if you don't need the horsepower and if you don't need some of the features on the Pi 5, the Pi 4 is still a great option. I mean, there's a reason why it's still not easy to get everywhere all the time because it's still super popular. Yeah. And it's not because it's the fastest SBC on the market because we all know that's not true anymore. So I, I think that they're going to keep selling a lot of Pi 4s and uh, as the Pi 5 comes on the market and they wanted to give a little bit of that runway for people to kind of be introduced to it and then it'll come available. Yeah, because it does use quite a bit more power, doesn't it? Is it five amps now it needs? Five volts? Uh, so, yeah, it's it's interesting. The The chip at idle only uses a little bit more. Um, mm. it, at full speed, it can use a lot more. And if you have a lot of expansion, like if you have two USB, three uh, SSDs or something off of it, uh, they built the power circuit inside of it. It's, it's an all-new architecture for power to be able to handle higher loads. So a lot of us had problems with the Pi 4. You'd plug in like two SSDs or two high power flash drives or something like that. And it would cause yeah. kind of brownouts and, and you'd lose data and you'd have all kinds of weird issues. And uh, that was even if you used Raspberry Pi's official power supply. With the Pi 5, they upped that so that now you can provide more power through, through the USB ports and have power to the CPU, which requires a little bit more power if you're going full blast and power a fan and you know all these different things so uh, now they do have the the higher power five amp five volt power supply which provides what is it 30 watts or something like that yeah. um, but with that they also allow you to still use the older power supply the three amp one but uh, you can choose whether you want like less power to the usb ports or you want to limit the cpu to lower frequency just to save on that power and make sure it's still stable so we, that was something that early on we were doing a lot of firmware work to make sure that it worked automatically. And it also should hopefully detect when you plug in like a cheap phone power supply. Yeah, That's a problem. You know, people buy this brand new Raspberry Pi, plug in a phone power supply, and it's all acting funny. It's, it's like, it's not the Pi, it's the power supply. So I think that this new power circuit that they helped uh, build can detect that and, and kind of figure out what to do, whether to yeah. say like, you can boot this thing, I only have like 500 milliamps, or you can boot it in kind of a throttled mode, but you need to buy the better power supply if you want to do cool stuff. So you mentioned that at launch, they're going to be launching the, the eight gig and the four gig. And I notice on the uh, the PCB, there's a little resistor that kind of selects which memory type it's got. And it also mentions a two and a one there. So I guess we'll be looking to see they'll be launching that at some point yeah and i i did talk to the engineers that there was a debate over whether the pi 4 could support 16 gigs yeah and the pi 4 in some sense yes but in reality no when they tested it it, it wasn't uh, stable and and somebody on youtube actually did an upgrade and it didn't work so uh i i'm told that this one can support up to 16 gigs of ram yeah. So I think that at some point in the future, we might see that happen. I, I think yeah. that'd be cool because with, with extra power on the processor, the extra RAM is, is helpful for certain cases, uh, yeah. especially as I said earlier, if you're doing things like machine learning and stuff, it's nice to have that extra RAM. Yeah. You need to train a model or, or do something like that. I mean, nobody's going to do big things on the Pi, yeah. but there's a lot of little things you can do and a lot of little things do sometimes need a lot of RAM. So that's all the questions I had for you today, uh, Jeff, on the Raspberry Pi 5 launch. So thank you so much for joining me. We'll speak soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. It really means a lot to me when people do subscribe. So please subscribe to the channel. And I do go live every single Sunday at seven o'clock UK local time. So hopefully I can catch you on one of the live shows and say hi in person. Hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.